Hello and welcome to another clarinet tutorial. My name is Chris Allison and I'm going to now give you a, a few tips and tricks for this lovely piece, Behrman Adagio. And then after the short tutorial, I'm going to give you an opportunity to play with the piano part all by yourself. Here we go. So I think we can start off by saying that this is a musically challenging piece, a really good piece to do for grade six, I think. Musically challenging that will really um, test your ability to play phrases in a very musical way within a slow pulse. So I think when you play this work, you can't help making comparisons and similarities to other beautiful slow movements. A bit like the slow movement perhaps in the Mozart Quintet or the Mozart Concerto. I think this really does have that sort of vibe to it, doesn't it? That sort of feel. It's so nice to play. Just one slightly negative point, I think, to this one is that the the accompaniment just doesn't feel quite in the same league. You know, I think if Mozart had written this solo line, he would have just put perhaps a, a slightly better accompaniment to it. I just feel that there's that occasional place in this piece where you you just want a note in the accompaniment or something on the beat and you just don't get it. It's just, for me, it's just a little bit sparse on the accompaniment. But having said that, you know, I still, you know, had a blast playing this. I've really enjoyed playing it. Okay, so let's firstly have a talk about the opening. And I, I do think these um, these openings where you have to really place that first note carefully, it is quite tricky. And especially as you're, you're sitting there for five bars waiting, uh, waiting for your first note. So I personally think a good way to practice that is actually play the piano part, the bar before you come in, and just really sort of set yourself up for where that exactly lies with the piano part. So uh, something like, so in the piano part, you've got this A flat crotchet goes to a D flat crotchet tied to another D flat dotted crotchet, and then a C natural quaver just before your first note. So, of course, you'll, if you want to do that, play those piano notes, you'll have to, of course, transpose it up a tone. So you would play B flat to E flat, and then D, and then come in with your G. So it's going to sound something like... And just try that a few times. So try it with those notes and without those notes with the backing track. And it will just give you a, a really good sort of practice at, at setting yourself up in the right way for that first bar. So I think it, it's really critical here for these first four bars that you really set the scene. Play it with the most beautiful sound that you can. Really floaty sort of nice sound. And just be careful how you get to that D up there. Now this bit with the triplets, I think when you do it with the backing track, you have to play it sort of um, really strictly in time there. But I think with your, you know, when you rehearse this with the pianist, you've got a little bit of license there. And on that B flat, I'm just improving the resonance there. So instead of just playing the two keys there, I'm adding two fingers there and two fingers there. And that will just give you a, a slightly different colour to that note and improve the resonance of the sound. As opposed to... Now when you get to bar 14, use this moment now to try and push some sound through the instrument. I'm always talking about this on my videos. You know, when you get those moments where you can play louder, it will just help you sort of push a bit of confidence into the instrument and if you're in an exam and you're a bit nervous you know these kind of moments are, are critical to just sort of playing out and, and playing over the top of your nerves a bit. So and of course on the next bar place those demi semi quavers nice and accurately. Okay, and moving into bar 18, let's have a chat about this. Now, when you're playing with the backing track, this is quite a tricky area to play because it's really hard to hear where the, the changes are in the tremolo in the piano part. 
Uh, and also note that where it's marked pianissimo at bar 18, it's not actually marked a breath there. Now I've played this with and without the breath. I, I actually slightly prefer it just having a sneaking in a breath there at that pianissimo, but strictly speaking, it's marked not to. Um, so just decide whether you are going to take a breath or not. If you don't, then perhaps play the minimum and then sneak in a little breath. And just be conscious, now I've marked on my part, again, I'm always mentioning this on my videos, mark on your part where those changes are in the tremolo in the piano. And bar 20, you'll hear a slight change in the notes in the tremolo. And then again, halfway through 21. And if you can just listen really carefully as you're playing through that section, you might just hear that it's a little bit, it's even harder to hear it at 21 actually, but you can kind of just latch onto it. So try and really stick with the slow pulse of the music. It's quite hard this bit to, uh, there's a natural tendency to want to sort of play through it a little bit quicker. So really feel that slow pulse. Okay, so let's have a little look at the scary bar, you might say, at bar 22. A whole load of demi semi quavers here and sextuplet demi semi quavers. So remember that the overall tempo is quite slow, so it's not as bad as it looks, this bar. So try and break it into pieces and just analyse what are the difficulties of this section. So I'm going to play the first little chunk there. So play to the C. And then remember, of course, that those two groups of sextuplets add up to one crotchet beat only, not two beats. So it looks like there's two chunks, like two beats of music. But both of those actually are just one crotchet's worth. So... Or a bit more up to speed, perhaps. So all of that in one beat. So we put that together with the other section. And then we get onto that interval. Now this interval, I think is quite tricky to go from a bottom F to a B flat, just to really pitch that B flat nicely. You might want to perhaps tongue the B flat just to help define the pitch a little bit more easily. And then, personally, I preferred to take the breath after the B-flat, not before it. And that just gave me a little bit more time and flexibility with the next bar. So... Okay, moving on then. So, back onto the tune. So all good there, that's kind of what we've played before. But then slight difference on the next section. And then, then again, going through this next section, there's just certain places where you'd really like a note on the piano or a beat or something, and there, and there just isn't one. So the piano part just sort of ducks in and out at slightly funny places, I think. So you've got... So there at bar 31, the piano doesn't join you on the beat there. The piano comes after the beat. And then on the next bit, oh, be careful here. Now this bit was especially hard to put with the backing track through the earphones because it, it was really hard to predict. Again, there isn't any piano on bar 33 at the start of that bar. It comes in on the second quaver. So you kind of have to... Just really listen out for it and try and synchronize your A, your A flat uh, with that quaver that comes in on the second quaver on the piano part. And then take a good breath here because you've got a really nice moment going up to the E flat, which the piano does join you on the beat up there. 
I think because there's a, a tenuto note on that lean on the on the D there on the start of the bar, you kind of want the piano to play something to help you kind of do that lean. And there's nothing there, but anyway, so. And again, nothing there on the beat at 36 on that C, nothing on the piano there. Now I found one of the best ways to tune this piece with the piano was to warm up, get tuned up with the tuning machine and then pull out an extra millimeter um, just to allow for the fact that so much of this piece is so quiet and as you get through to that second page there's so many notes there that sound sharp with the piano um, you have to almost overcompensate a little bit. Um, so this moment that we've arrived at at 37 is one of those moments where you'll really hear if you've gone terribly sharp with the piano. And again on the next section. Another E flat to land sharp with the piano again. So again, be really careful. Next section should be okay, I think, with the tuning. And just a final word about the last line here. Now the top C flat, I mean, in terms of high notes on the clarinet, it doesn't look that high, does it? But when you're up at that part of the instrument, you're only using kind of like, you know, not even half of the instrument. It feels, after you get to, when you get to the end of the piece, it feels a little bit tricky and exposed, just hanging on to that B there. Uh, and there's a bit of a diminuendo leading up there. So a little bit fiddly, a little bit tricky just to hold on to that nicely. And then moving from the B to the B flat, again, I'm adding some extra fingers just to improve the quality of the sound on the B flat there. So those lower two notes there and the lower two there. So in summary, all in all, I think this is a really super piece to play with the piano. It's very musically testing. It's very good for practice at playing in a slow pulse and really holding your part together in that slow pulse. And it's very searching on the tuning. So just be really careful that you tune carefully. And almost, you might want to just very slightly flatten the instrument for this sort of piece, because you'll find as the instrument warms up, when you get to the, the second page, those E flats against the piano are really quite nasty to tune. So be careful on the tuning issues, but best of luck with this one. I hope you get a really good result. But I think that's it for this one. So do play along with the piano accompaniment and have a go yourself and see if you can get it really in tune and really in time. And I will remind you, of course, that if you're not subscribed to the channel already, then please do so and click on that bell notification and you will receive updates of future videos that I release.
that's it for this one. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.